Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and in this video, you'll learn how to use Plant UML within a GitLab wiki to provide a collaborative way to create diagrams and keep them up to date. And if you've ever spent any time reading through documentation, you'll understand the value of a well-placed diagram. It's a way to cement understanding and explain complex ideas more easily than in text. But unfortunately, wiki services often don't make it easy to create diagrams. This is really because wikis are based around editing text-based information. And often when it comes to creating diagrams, people will use an external tool, such as Lucidchart or PowerPoint, and then upload an image file to the wiki. But there's a couple of problems with this. And how can someone edit the diagram if it needs to be updated? And even if you're able to provide a link to the original file as an attachment, it's going to be a slow process to edit it. And more often than not, the diagram won't be updated at all and will quickly become out of date as the text around it moves on. But fortunately, some clever folks over at PlantUML spotted this problem and have provided a way to render diagrams from text. Here's a simple sequence diagram example. And the fact that PlantUML diagrams are defined using a simple and easy to understand text syntax makes them ideal for wikis. It's easy to collaborate on the diagrams and keep them bang up to date. And this diagram is represented by this code. And you'll learn more about the plant UML syntax later on in this video. So now I'm going to jump into an example of exactly how to get this set up. So let's jump into the code. And just to give you an idea here of what we're going to be setting up, this is how the flow is going to look. So we're going to have an instance of GitLab, GitLab Server Community Edition, and also Plant UML Server. So these are two standalone services that we're going to be bringing up using Docker and Docker Compose. So the flow here is that the user is going to request a wiki page from GitLab, and then GitLab is going to return a Plant UML image URL, and that image URL is going to send the user off to the plant UML server which is going to render the diagram. So to set all this up we're going to be using two docker images. One is the GitLab community edition docker image which is over here on hub.docker.com and over here we've got uh, plant UML server edition. And if you do want to follow along with this example you can you can write the code from scratch or you can start with everything you need from this repository over at github.com slash tkgregory slash plantuml dash gitlab. And this contains the Docker Compose YAML um, along with a readme to tell you exactly what to do. So the first thing we need to set up is a Docker Compose file and if you haven't used Docker much before. This is just a file that describes the services or the containers that we want to bring up in Docker. So I'm going to create a file in this plant UML GitLab directory, which by the way is a completely fresh directory. I'm going to create a, a file called docker-compose.yaml. And in here I'm going to start typing away what we need. So we're going to be using version 3 of Docker Compose. And then we're going to have two services defined here. One is GitLab. That's going to use GitLab Community Edition latest. And then in terms of the ports that we have available for GitLab, we're going to have port 443, port 80, and port 22. Importantly, in the environment section, which is where you specify environment variables that should be provided to your Docker container, we're going to set up an environment variable called GitLab Omnibus Config, which is a way to provide specific configuration options to this GitLab container. And in our case, we're going to be providing an Nginx configuration. When requests come in for slash dash slash plant UML, that's going to get forwarded on to our Docker container that's running um, on plant UML 8080. 
So don't worry too much about this syntax, but you just need to remember that if we request from the GitHub container dash slash plant UML, that's going to forward on to our plant UML Docker container. And now we're going to define the plant UML container. And you can either choose the Tomcat or Jetty version. And here I'm going to choose Jetty. And this gets exposed on port 8080. I'm going to save this file. Now we can run docker compose up, which is going to use the docker compose file that we just created and bring up the services defined within there. Okay, so I have made a mistake. A schoolboy error, this string, this version at the top needs to be defined as a string. Okay, great. So we can see here that it, that we've got log output from plant UML started. And now we've got log output from GitLab, which is probably going to be a bit more verbose. So first up, we can navigate to localhost 8080, where we have a plant UML server running. And this provides a nice interface where you can actually test out um, the diagram syntax if you like. So here's an example with some plant UML syntax and when you click submit that generates the diagram down below here. Uh, a very simple example. Uh, we're going to be getting into more detail about the syntax later in the video uh, but generally this this isn't a page you're going to need to go to that often because you're going to be editing your plant UML syntax and rendering the diagram from within GitLab itself, from within the GitLab wiki. So let's head over to GitLab now, which is going to be running on port 80. Let's see if it started. And first things first, we need to generate a password. So just enter a password, click change your password. And now we can log in and the default user is root then enter the password and here we're going to create a project which is going to have a wiki associated with it and we're going to use that to demonstrate the plant UML syntax so click create a project and enter a project name and then click create project down the bottom here and here we've got the new project and on the left here you'll see a link to wiki and click on that and it says this wiki lets you write documentation for your project let's create the first page and as I'm a funny guy I'm going to create a page called jokes and my best joke is going to be ha 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 okay so let's click create a page and now we've got our wiki rendered so Nothing new there. There's an additional configuration we need to do before we can start adding plant UML diagrams, and that's to enable the integration with plant UML from within the GitLab configuration here. So click on the wrench icon up in the admin area. And then on the left here, go to settings, integrations, and here we've got plant UML, allow rendering of plant UML diagrams in ASCII doc documents. Click expand and then click the enable plant UML checkbox there. And now we're going to enter plant UML URL, which is going to be localhost. And then here we've got the slash dash slash plant UML that we saw earlier plant UML URL, which it will use to generate the image URLs, is going to be localhost port 80, which is GitLab, and then dash slash plant UML, which from the configuration that we had earlier, the Nginx configuration, is going to forward on to the plant UML Docker container. So click Save Changes now, and that's all set up, so we should be good to go to start adding some plant UML diagrams. So go back to, let's go back to the 
project and the wiki page of hilarious jokes and I'm going to hit edit again here. Now we're going to add a basic diagram. So the syntax that you need to use to start and end a diagram is the markdown syntax which is triple backtick and then plant UML and then to close that off it's triple backtick again and then within here you define your diagram so a really simple example so the way you define plant UML diagrams is with participants and then you define messages that pass between them so in this example we've got two participants Bob and Alice and there's a message from Bob to Alice and if you use the colon you can specify a description for that message hello and then we've got a message in the other direction from Alice to Bob and that says hi so if I click save changes here we can see this diagram is rendered interesting to look at is if you go to open image in new tab for example you'll see here is the URL we configured earlier in the GitLab admin area and then we've got a huge additional part to the URL which actually contains all the information plant UML needs to render this diagram so this is actually an encoded string so now let's change this up for a slightly more involved diagram and this time I'm going to create a diagram to describe plant UML and GitLab and how the interactions work between them and the user. And note here that you can put the arrows in any direction. So this here is the equivalent of me writing GitLab forward arrow user. So you can have it whatever way around you want it. And here I'm going to leave the message description out so you don't have to specify the colon, you don't have to specify a message if you don't want to. So that renders like this. And the other thing to note here is that the participants that you have, so in this diagram we've got the participants of user, GitLab and plant UML, they are derived from the messages that you define. So because of the fact that we've defined all these messages that use these participants, that's how GitLab derives them. But you can define participants yourself. Let's say that in this diagram I wanted to change GitLab to say GitLab Community Edition. And let's say that I wanted the GitLab participant to appear after plant UML. Then I would do that this way. We can define at the start of the diagram a list of participants. So I could say participant user participant plant UML and the order of these definitions determines how they appear in the diagram so I'm going to have user and then plant UML and then I'm going to have if you want to have multi word participant names use quotes so here I can say GitLab community edition and then I can say as GitLab which is a kind of shorthand reference which means that I can continue to use GitLab when I define messages down here but in the diagram it's going to display as GitLab Community Edition. So let's save that. Yep, so now we've got GitLab Community Edition and it's appearing at the end of the diagram. And we're not going to go over all the syntax here because it's well documented on the Plant UML website but just as a bit of fun you can do all sorts of advanced stuff in these diagrams and here's an example from the Plant UML website of what you can do with sequence diagrams alone and remember that there are other types of diagrams such as class diagrams, state diagrams, flow diagrams and others. So hopefully now you should be familiar with how to set up GitLab to point to an instance of Plant UML which will allow you to add diagrams to wiki pages and hopefully you can now apply this to your own projects. And you've also had an introduction to the syntax 
for plant UML sequence diagrams. And I do recommend that you head on over to the plant UML webpage where there's loads of documentation about the different types of sequence diagrams and all the other sorts of diagrams that you can create there with this, what I think is a, is a great tool. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to see other related videos in future. And I'll also put down in the description all the resources that are related to this video, including the GitHub repository so that you can follow along with this example. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.